So, this is a little uh, answer to a question asked by Abdulaziz. Um, a little harsh, the light there. Uh, Dr. Piconi, I am reviewing lecture one. For the definition of Kirchhoff's current law, it says the current in a node is equal to current out. Right under, it says the sum of current into a node must be zero. Does that mean the current in equals current out equals zero? Thanks. So that's a good question. Um, I thought I would take a moment to discuss that. Um, Part of it is that we haven't talked explicitly about sign convention yet, but it's essentially um, uh, something that has to do with signs. So let's imagine a node. Let's take a node here. And we've got wires connected, say, to this node. And we've got current flowing into the node. I1, I2, I3 etc. Right? So <clears throat> we say there's current flowing in. Um, so let's say maybe this was 2 amps. This is 1 amp. And this is uh, 5 amps. Uh, there's a problem, right? Because suddenly we've got um, 2 amps and 1 amp and 5 amps all going into this node and the question is where is it going? Um, we must have some sort of storage happening here at this node but we're saying um, um, that we can't store uh, any any uh, uh, current in a node so so whatever goes into the node must come out of the node so this is actually impossible to have 2 amps, 1 amp, and 5 amps so when we say current going into a node um, some of these must be negative uh, uh, in order for that to be the case. Sorry, Niles is up to no good. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, um, one, one thing that would be possible would be that if I1 is 2 and I2 is 1, then this I3 could be negative 3 amps, which is to say current's actually flowing out along this wire. So 3 amps would be going in and 3 amps would be going out. So when we say going into the node, we're uh, uh, allowing for the fact that there can be negative currents. So um, we should be able to write I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals 0 and that's with the convention that we've got here where all of the signs are drawn in. Uh, we could also write, so I'll draw another one. Um, well, I'll draw three wires like I did there. Nice, chill. And uh, let's do I1 and let's do, um, let's make I2 pointed this way. So we didn't have to point it in. Um, and let's make I3 also pointed out in the node. Then when we write our summation, it's going to be I1 into the node minus I2 out of the node minus I3 out of the node equals zero. In this case, um, it's possible that I1, I2, and I3 are all positive quantities. So it all depends on the direction you drew your convention for current. If you draw them all into the node, which is what I meant when I said all the current going into a node uh, must sum up to zero, I'm, I'm assuming that there must be some negative uh, uh, values there. Um, but the main idea, though, is that uh, when you apply KCL, you have to use the direction arrow uh, of the currents in the summation. And then if you sum them all up, they should equal zero. So as long as you do that, you'll be fine. This is, this is very analogous to the situation of having um, in your statics or dynamics class when you had uh, free body diagrams and you had forces pointed in different directions 
and you would have to say, okay, well, I'm assuming it's going in this way, but if I get a negative sign, it's actually going the other way. Um, with current, uh, we, we do the same thing. We assign it some assumed direction. Uh, assuming is, is not really what we're doing. We're saying that this is going to be our convention for positive, and uh, if it comes out negative, then we, we know it's going the opposite direction. Um, so that's what we're doing here, just like free body diagrams and force arrows, uh, the same is going to apply for current and um, uh, the arrows that we, we draw on the diagram um, for positive quantities of that, of that uh, current. So that's hopefully short, <laughs> I don't know, it's an answer to the question. Hopefully that was thorough and yeah. You got it. So, all right. See you guys Friday.